Good morning, a Thursday morning here for Liz yeah, and yeah. me over on the East Coast, and Levi over on the East Coast <laughs> of the United States. And then, of course, it's early afternoon for our friend Catherine over in the UK. How are you ladies doing today? Great. Uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing really good. It's a lovely, lovely sunny day here, yeah. and I've got my fire going in the background, so it's cold, but it's one of those lovely, cold, crisp winter days here, so the birds are out the deer are out everyone's nature's off foraging and I'm in with my nice warm fire <laughs> I feel like before we get into the show I feel like such an energy shift has happened globally anyway because it's just like yeah. one domino after the other wow. keeps falling and and it's so exciting and of course we're at a year anniversary mark so that's quite interesting so um so i hope that everybody watching is in just uh, just as a good mood as we are i know last night i my nose was running all night and my throat's a little scratchy this morning and i feel like do you guys remember back when you were like kids and you are younger and you were like studying for exams and you would study 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 and then you take the exam and then you'd be on break and you get sick because all of a sudden your body just kind of relaxed I feel like that's kind of happening to me right now. Like my body's starting to relax a little bit because it really feels like we're towards the end. So if I sneeze <laughs> or have to cough, I apologize. Um, <laughs> so, um, but of course this is what episode number three of, then again, this was all Catherine's idea, guidance guys to do this series on passions. And we know everyone's loving it because it's, it's so motivating um, to hear from other people who have really cool stories and passions in life. And of course, we've uh, talked to Mornay from Aquarius Rising Africa, David Zublick from the Dark Outpost. And now, as I've called her the TikTok queen, Liz, but now <laughs> she has maneuvered to YouTube as well. So yeah. we are he here with Liz. And I know, Liz, you are so passionate. You have so many passions and you live your life with such vibrancy. And I think that's why people are so attracted to you and especially to your, what are you on round number four with TikTok? Yeah, <laughs> fourth account, yeah. <laughs> four? So your first one had like 60,000 subscribers or followers? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was like, I think it was up to 65,000. Uh, then it got booted permanently, taken down supposedly. Then I made another one, got up to like 12. That got taken down. Then I made another one. Then two weeks later, that one got taken down. So now I'm on the fourth. And you also, and I'm just going to, before we get into your story, I'm just going to share screen, screen quickly so you guys can see um, Liz is moving herself over to the YouTube platform as well. So this is her channel um, that she just opened. So if you're following Liz on uh, TikTok, go ahead and subscribe to her on YouTube as well. I think at this point, I know Catherine and I both have backup channels on Rumble. And uh, Catherine, are you still on BitChute as well too? Well, I sort of am on BitChute, but I'm really behind with uploading um, the videos because I've got a website as well. So as yeah. a backup, because once you've had everything wiped off, you learn to do backups. But with you had that happen too, Catherine. So oh, yeah, yeah. I, I my first one just got <laughs> wiped overnight. Um, but um, yeah, Liz, can I say, I, are you hearing Liz all right, Bryce? Because she's really quiet. You, Liz, you're really quiet to me on your mic. I'm I'm going off and on, turning it off and on because my toddler's making noise, so it might be extra quiet hear. at some point. Okay, it, that's it. I can hear. So um, guys, let us know. Hopefully there's not any vo volume issues in the show, but please go ahead before we get started because Liz had, here's her TikTok right here because she is, she's a brave one. And I'm not on TikTok, guys, because I, so that's why I haven't clicked follow because I'm not on TikTok because I'm old. So, um, so, um, so please go ahead, follow her here as well. And, and Liz, like, My father, I mean, you are so smart. The way you're able, the one thing that gets me about TikTok is um, you have to do things so quickly. Like you mm -hmm. only have like what up to three minutes to to say what yeah, you. Yeah, that's the think. max. That's the max. And if you want your video to actually get seen, they recommend doing like fifteen seconds. So you literally have to like say what you're gonna say, or at least like kind of allude to what you're gonna say, so people get interested um and come and look at the rest of your stuff which is why i started the youtube channel because you can't say hardly anything in 15 seconds well so, you're creative um, though and i noticed on tiktok like it's so like you have to be so good at like putting the visual up pointing out what you need to point out and making people think like 
pointing at it. You guys remember, I don't know if you saw this, Catherine, if it made its way over to the United Kingdom, but this was summer of 2020. And I'll have to be careful about how I say this, but he came, he became known as the ramen guy. Yeah. It was, it was so funny. I actually have it saved on my phone because it was uh, talking about like basically our first amendment rights to peaceful or, or to peacefully protest. And, and anyway, uh, you guys probably have seen it. I'll see if I can find a link to share it in the description box below if you haven't, but it, it was so fast and he was so witty. And I feel like that's what TikTok is. You have to be so fast and witty and clever to get your message out in that short amount of time. Yeah, it's kind of like, it's a great advertising tool, I would say. Yeah. Like uh, anybody, especially like musicians, I'm like, why aren't you on TikTok? Like your stuff will get seen so quickly. Like it's, you know, just putting a little sound bite of your music like the best part of it. And then people go and listen on another platform. It's the best form of advertisement. I'd say in a sense, like I don't really use it as advertising it, but I just use it as a tool to kind of just get to the point. <laughs> you know. So I wanted to ask you Liz, so how did you get started on, did you start your TikTok when this um, scandemic um, yeah. came about? that when you started yeah so I originally wasn't posting anything political um I was just posting stuff about my family and um because I had just had my son my son was born right before everything shut down um and so I was like becoming a new mother <laughs> like in this crazy world and I was just like I need an outlet of some kind so I started doing that and then once I started to just be like this is ridiculous like <laughs> this is I need to start like I started just pointing people to like Charlie um, and because I was following him at the time and I mean I still am but um, I just kind of felt like it was time to start saying something because I am pretty reserved <laughs> if you can believe it <laughs> I'm pretty I don't like to I don't like confrontation very much um, and so putting myself out there and expressing what I believed and what I thought and the rabbit holes that I had gone down for so many years before all of this happened was huge for me. And it still is. I still am kind of like terrified every time I post something slightly controversial. Um, but yeah, I started posting just things about, you know, just stating a question pretty much because people are like, wait, what is she talking about? It's like on TikTok, you can't really say much. And then people would start asking me questions and like, and then my videos would go viral. And, and then I started getting more and more followers and they're like, I love what you're doing. Keep doing it. And so I was just like, okay. <laughs> and then Charlie ended up finding me on TikTok. I went on his show and he was just like, I love what you're doing. Thank you so much. Like, please keep doing it. You know? And so I did, and <laughs> that was just been this kind of journey that was very unexpected and very out of character for me. Um, but it has 100% molded me into who I am today, and I'm loving the person I am today <laughs> for sure. Um, but yes, I did start right when everything happened. Now you told last time we spoke, Liz, because you actually just got back from the UK because your sister lives over there. And, um, and we used to do shows regularly. And of course you took a little bit of a break, but you told me something you told me on text message. And then we talked about it on our episode, how you kind of just recently got like activated, like, yeah, it's like <laughs> yeah. Almost ascension yourself. Yeah. I feel like I, um, what are you doing? Come here. I feel like I, I've been activated slowly. Like there's been a progression of it. But I felt like when I was in England, I kept getting in tarot, what they call the tower moment. Like I kept hearing that in my head. And I don't know that much about tarot. I, I watched Janine and that's about it. <laughs> um, and but I just know from what she talks about, like the tower moment card is like, you know, the moment, your moment kind of thing. And I just kept hearing in my head, this is your tower moment. This is your tower moment. And I was like, what does this mean? I don't know why this is my tower moment, but great. Um, and yeah, I feel like something just switched when I came back home. And it wasn't like I was trying to get to any certain point or, or try to make anything happen. Like I wasn't actively trying to like be my best self <laughs> 
I was like, you know, people are always trying to grow and evolve and whatnot, but I wasn't even trying. <laughs> it was just something literally switched on in me. Um, and I just feel like a totally different person. I feel like so much more powerful um, and that I can just handle anything that comes my way now. It's kind of strange. <laughs> That's amazing. And um, have you, you mentioned when you started your TikTok channel and started sort of really having the confidence to express your opinions about what and your thoughts about what was happening. How was that received by your close friends and family? Honestly, they, well, my, my family was very supportive because they're all on the same kind of page um, yeah. as, which is amazing, honestly, because <laughs> I know that people do not have that experience right now. Um, but yeah, it was, I'm very thankful that my inner circle of family, at least, is very much on the same page. And then with friends, it's kind of a weird, I mean, I'm sure you know this because you have had children, but it's kind of a weird thing that happens once you have kids. Mm. Um, like your friends kind of go away anyways. <laughs> so it just kind of, I like pegged it to motherhood and not so much like what I was talking about. Um, and it's really sad because I've never really connected with my friends on the same level as like I connected with Bryce. Mm. Um, uh, just because I didn't really express exactly what I was always thinking or what I believed in conspiracy theory wise or, you know, whatnot. And so it wasn't really that big of a jolt to me um, just because I became a mother when it all happened and my life was turned upside down anyway. So I wasn't really even focused on friends at all. Um, but since then it's, I always approach it like if any of my friends that don't believe what I believe, which plenty of my age group are very asleep, which is so sad. And it made me so sad, which is one of the reasons I just kept going. So I was like, I want to be an example <laughs> if I can. Yeah, it was, uh, it was kind of, um, I always approached it. If they ever had questions, I would just talk to them and just be like, this is what I believe. This is, Oh, hi, cat. oh I need to have a black cat. Um, <laughs> I would be like, this is what I believe. This is why I believe it. This is what I found in my research. Like, if you don't believe it, it's fine. You know, I'd never like try to push it on anyone. And that opened up the conversation so much more than just being like, why did you vote for him? Like, what is wrong with you? Do you not see that he's evil? Like, you know, kind of thing. So I feel like my friends have been, the, some of them are just now discovering that I know all this and think all about all this stuff, which is hilarious. And they're like, Liz, I have no idea. <laughs> what the heck? And I'm like, yeah, there's a lot. You don't You're know like, about. I'm kind of a big deal. Low key, I'm kind of a big deal. I'm kind of a big deal. I, I recently just told one of my friends, she's not on TikTok at all. Um, but I recently told her, I was like, yeah, like I have a pretty big following. <laughs> so like, uh, and she was like, what? who are you? It's like, sorry. <laughs> I just didn't think it was like relevant to talk about. <laughs> it's like you're Batman, you're Batwoman. Yeah. You've got like this secret life that where you're this, I won't well, mind. That's, that's honestly like a theme of my life. I've always felt like I was supposed to be undercover in a sense. Um, and just kind of plant seeds for people and not be so like blatant about everything. And that's what I've all, cause I mean, growing up in a religious world it was always like tell people about jesus you know like you gotta evangelize yeah yeah and I, I was like but what if i just like have a good conversation with them and like they they realize i'm nice and then they want to find it for themselves like you know like I, maybe they realize i'm different and they want to like search out why maybe that is you know like find it for themselves instead of me like just railing it in them um and so like i always felt weird about the whole like evangelizing thing and whatnot and and so I was like, I just think I'm a seed planter. <laughs> I'll just, I'll just accept that. <laughs> so, yeah. That kind of oh. leads me. Oh, go ahead, Catherine. Sorry. No, well, no, carry on. Cause mine's moving on to some of your creative stuff. So well, you I was, on. speaking of, I'm glad you brought religion into it. Cause one thing that fascinates me about you, Liz, and I think we're very similar in the sense that we both grew up in the deep South. We both kind of come from the same, we understand the Bible belt. We understand the social, uh, 
norms and customs around that culture of the Bible Belt. Um, and one thing that's really fascinating about you, me to you, Liz, is that you have a, a deep, uh, really genuine passion for God. And it, it's not the church. You are, you, you, conversations we've had, you are like, it's almost like you're this, you're in wonder at, at the spiritual world. Oh, look, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I, I think that your passion for, uh, in my opinion, from what I see your passion for truth when it comes to spirit and who we are in relationship to spirit is kind of what is underlying driving your need to put things on TikTok. Cause Catherine, and I have spoken right. about that you know, at the end of the day, all this political education, everything like that is really just symptoms of the main thing, which is the spiritual battle. And right. so you kind of got that first, it seems like at yeah. a very young age, and then realized all these other things were happening as symptoms of the bigger thing. So you talked a lot about the kingdom doctrine and the kingdom. Uh, can you explain people your to, to our people that will lead into your other creative passions, your passion for God and, and, and our source, whatever you want to call it? Yeah, I mean, um, it was kind of, someone once asked me um, to, like, tell my story of, like, when I met God, like, in a church setting, and I was, like, so confused by that answer, I was, or that question, so I was, like, I've always known him, <laughs> like, I don't, there's not a specific time where I was, like, I met God, you know, and I, like, in a sense, I feel like that's, a, like, a privilege in a way, because I wasn't really born with that shield over me um and like my first word when I was like my first word other than like mommy and daddy was angel like I would look up and say angel angel kind of thing it was like I always was a aware of the spiritual realm around us well Bubba he's wanting attention do you want to play with my rocks <laughs> she gives him her crystals to play let him play with my crystals <laughs> There you go. Um, but yeah, I always was aware of the spirit realm is what we would call it growing up. And um, I just, I, I mean, I remember telling my mom that, you know, Jesus was sitting on my bed and I would talk to him kind of thing. Like it was just one of those things where I never felt like there was a disconnect from source God. And it was always strange to me that people felt so disconnected from him. Um, her, him, whatever you want to call him. Um, and so it's just one of those things of like, I felt lied to my entire life about everything because I question every single thing that the Matrix has uh, put over us, like school, like why we learn things in school that we learn, um, or even why we have to go to school when, you know, like I, I was a little rebel, like in my own little way. Um, there's just so many things that I questioned growing up that we know now are, you know, part of the dark side. Um, and it was just one of those things that I just innate, I like came into this realm knowing, um, I told Bryce on a, the last video that I just feel like I kind of came ascended to a certain extent. Um, and for the purpose of raising the vibration of other people, like, planting that seed to where they can start their journey because I I have a th I have a theme of starting things <clears throat> I, I, every uh, business I've ever worked for has been a small business that I helped raise up um, until they got really successful and then I left um, so yeah so it was just kind of like I always felt like you know, you could call it an impasse, but at the same time, I knew that I wasn't supposed to take on that. And that was part of like staying in the frequency that I was originally here for um, and connecting with God in a way that most people don't think of. Like I literally just have conversations in my head all the time and I didn't realize that that was weird until somebody was like, that's schizophrenic. And I was like, I don't think it is. <laughs> I think that's you, girl. I talk to I talk to God source all day long. Usually, yeah, it's like, like, why did you make this person? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <I'm sorry. yeah. laughs> what is wrong with them? Can you do something, please? <laughs> um, but yeah, like I just, I've always, I'm just, I've always been on a search for truth because I just feel like everything's such a lie. <laughs> I just, I've always, and I've always been skeptical 
of everyone. Like my mom used to say that I used to just look at people like with this like, are you like, mm, there's something about you I don't like. <laughs> I just have this like terrible face that she would get really embarrassed about. <laughs> like this look I would give to people because I could just like, she was like, you could just see right through them. <laughs> I was like, yeah. yeah, I pretty much could. I always, I always could feel the energy of someone and like, if I didn't like them, I didn't like them. Um, <clears throat> and it's very much carried out into my, the rest of my life and world. And if I don't feel energetically like we're aligned I'm just like no <laughs> but it's been I mean it's just one of those things I just always I'm trying to keep this on I'm going on so many rabbit trails but I'm trying to keep this on your question <laughs> but I just always felt a connection um there's never been a separation to me because the spirit world has always been real I've seen beings all my life I've you know orbs lights like just so many things like in the religious world, they call it a seer, you know, whatever, <laughs> kind of, we're all talking about the same thing, but, you know, um, and uh, it's been really freeing the past couple of years, just kind of realizing that we're all talking about the same thing, and I'm not crazy, and, you know, finding a community online of people that are very much energetically aligned, and, and it's just given me even more, um, of a drive to share and express the things that I just know innately um, and think about um, or just get like downloaded to me because yeah. Um, anyways. Oh, <laughs> it's wonderful to have that and it just must be, um, you know, especially, you know, now that you, you're a mom as well, that's so, yeah. so important, isn't it? Because you're going yeah. to, son's gonna grow up with that um yeah well he's already question. going eyes mouth like me pointing at the ceiling and i'm like okay yeah, there is something up there buddy <laughs> you're right <laughs> say hi <laughs> you know oh that's so cute so you've yeah. got lots of other passions in terms of expressing your creativity haven't you with your art yeah. and your t-shirt yeah. your magazines can you talk us through how how you got started with those and and how how it helps you really fulfill your joy in life yeah it's um it's been a long journey but i mean i i have always been super creative um i i mean as soon as i could like i was singing first and you know because that's like the one thing you can start to do as a child um, I was singing first, then I started dancing and acting and painting and drawing and, and creating. I started, I would draw clothes. I have like a book that I drew when I was seven that was like a design, like a, a collection of clothes. Um, and, you know, it's always just been one way to like get my truth out without being so in your face about it. Um, and that's exactly what I've done with my, um, t-shirt sweatshirt line on here. Um, it's, uh, it's one of those things I definitely, um, I started to, you know, I was working a part-time job, um, at a, at a ballroom dance studio. I had taught ballroom dance, um, when I was pregnant with my son. And then I obviously couldn't really teach <laughs> while having my son, um, on this side of the earth, um, on this side of my body. And, um, so my boss was like, well, you can do like front desk stuff and, you know, you can bring him with you. So I brought my son with me to work for like 17 months and, um, I hated it because it was so hard because <laughs> I was not able to really get any work done and, you know, just trying to, uh, trying to work and, take care of a baby at the same time. It's not super easy. So I, um, I said this actually on a, my, one of my recent um, YouTube videos, but I was talking about how I, I watched a video of this um, lady talking about how um, if you, if you're in a place where you're stuck, just start telling yourself, like when you start complaining, no, I'm choosing this. And I was like, Okay, like I feel like I'm very stuck because I was waiting for the world to change. I was waiting for, you know, the whole like money reset thing. Um, I was just waiting for anything to happen, you know, just and not stepping into my power at all. So I was like, okay, I'm going to start doing this. Like anytime I start complaining at work, I'm going to say I choose this. 
and I did. And then I was like, why am I choosing this? <laughs> it just brought up that question in me. And I was like, there are so many other things that I could do. Like I, I'm creative. There's so many ways you can make money online now. Like, you know, why don't I try to figure something out? So then literally I just came across like how to like do this essentially, like, you know, designing t-shirts and I kind of watched a few like tutorials and whatnot. And I was like, I could do that. Like there's so many things that I want on t-shirts. I'm like, Oh, that's a great t-shirt. That's a great t-shirt. And so I started making my line essentially. And I started to put things that uh, instead of just, you know, I could easily make Mr. T sweatshirts and they would, you know, sell out probably, you know, but I wanted to actually create something that had meaning behind it for me um, and did kind of plant the seeds for people. Um, And it's very much what I did when I was younger with like designing clothes and whatnot. Um, And uh, it's a step in the direction that me and my husband want to go. Um, My husband's, uh, father is a amazing tailor and every time we're over in Mozambique where he's from um he makes these custom outfits for me I just draw them up and he makes them and we want to eventually have um a store in Mozambique that he makes custom clothes and you know have a way essentially for his to support his family without like just giving them money um you know give them some kind of dignity and let them do something they love because he loves making clothes for people. Um, and he's very creative and he can teach other people. So this is kind of the step in that direction. It's kind of fulfilling <laughs> different areas um, slowly. And it's been a amazing thing because the more I create, the happier I am. Um, and I never knew that I needed that. Um, you know, like when you become a mother, you put pretty much everything <laughs> that is of you aside especially when they're very little um and I just needed an outlet so badly to um express myself creatively um because I've heard that (laughs) the power of creativity if you don't actually let it out can eat you alive pretty much um and I think that is a symbol of what's going on in the world right now um because I feel like we're so caught up in the matrix and the nine to five and the, we just got to make money to survive mentality that no one's creating and no one's, you know, sharing what's inside of them with the world. And it's essentially causing disease, I think, um, because there's just so much in them that's not being let out. It's like creating like a tornado effect in their bodies. Um, but yeah, so that's what I wanted to do with my line. I, I pretty much design something every day. Um, I don't put everything out because obviously not everything's meant. She's got one of them on now. I cut you all know I cut all my shirts. I am endlessly yeah. creating my reality. I have tons of Liz's t-shirts. They're my favorite t-shirts. Yeah. And I do, I do. That's one thing. And I, and I, I don't know if y'all can see my computer is having a hard time pulling up some of the image images, freaking Mercury retrograde, of course. But <laughs> I love how you were saying, like, you could have just gone and put a bunch of Mr. T sweatshirts up and like, they would have sold like hotcakes. But what, but again, this kind of goes back to something that Catherine and I have talked about that even though we're so freaking grateful to Mr. T and like, so grateful, we understand it's not necessarily about just him or about the Kennedys or about Princess yeah. Diane, even though we're so grateful that they kicked the ball off for us, it's about all of us. It's about all yeah. of us consciously making these decisions. Like this sweatshirt says awaken. And all mm-hmm. the, these I have that the- under this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> You're pointing out all of my shirts today. Like without I mean, even knowing. <laughs> I hope they'll pull up. So, okay, some of them. So here's here's the, it's all a pantomime, which is Charlie Ward yeah. saying, have that shirt too. Um, yeah, I, um, I asked him if, one of my followers was like, can you design a Charlie Ward shirt? <laughs> I was like, sure. So I, I, I made it and then sent it to Charlie and asked his permission and everything. He's got his name on it. He was like, absolutely, go for it. So it's blessed by him. <laughs> so, <you know. laughs> and it's Pope Charlie Ward, Cardinal Charlie Ward. Yeah. I'm just kidding. Um, it's, it's the Alice in Wonderland <laughs> Land looking beyond the veil, right? It's like she's looking behind yeah. the curtain. And I have this yeah. sweatshirt born for a yeah. time such as this. And that's obviously from the book of Esther. Perhaps you were yep. born for such a time as this. 
Um, mm -hmm. And I know we've talked about that a lot, Catherine and I have, how we get, I mean, even with uh, the last round table we did with David and Medina about how sometimes it's going to be exhausting, but you were made for this. Um, yeah. And so I have this one as well. I have a lot of her shirts, guys. <laughs> uh, yeah, was, Bryce has been like my biggest supporter. <laughs> I love them though, because again, yeah, it's not like, you know, I have a couple of, uh, I, I have a Mr. T shirt that I absolutely cannot wear in Atlanta because yeah. I can't do it. So I wear it, I can wear it in Florida, but, um, but, um, you know, but, but I can't, you know, but with these shirts, you're right. You can just, and they're timeless too, because, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's, it's all, what's explain the seated shirts as well. I know you've explained this on my channel before, but the seated, what is that? <clears throat> yeah. So that kind of goes back to your other question that I realized I didn't answer. <laughs> um, it's essentially like, so stepping from like religious mindset to kingdom mindset um just essentially realizing that you are seated you know it's in the bible it's like you're seated in heavenly places so if we are the dna of god of the divine then we are rulers and kings and priests and whatever you want to call it and um you know they all have thrones essentially so being seated in that place of authority <clears throat> to where you're not a victim and you're essentially taking control over your life and your world um, is essentially like, I think the goal that we should all have um, is just kind of taking charge of, of who we are and realizing who we are um, and just being firm and planted in that place of peace and seated there, no matter what's going on in our world and kind of dictating and legislating, you know, to make things better. Yeah. I love yeah. it, Liz, because what I love is, you know, you said earlier on about how your role has <laughs> always been to plant the seed. And with all of your designs, you are truly opening up a conversation. Right. And yeah. the conversation based on the individual can flow in so many different ways. And that right. is just <laughs> so fantastic because I, I think what Bryce and I spoke before about how we've moved past this time of you – we whatever side of the fence you look at you sit on and there's every shade of gray in between it's mm -hmm. not our job to tell anyone yeah. what to yeah. think but when you have these open conversations mm -hmm. everyone gets something out of it yeah yeah i i've had some people um that bought my shirts i just kind of like ask them like what do you think it means you know kind of thing and you know, it's it's awesome to see their perspective on it because I'm like, well, yeah, I didn't think of that, but it totally could mean that too. Like whatever you want it to mean, you know, it's just a way of expressing my truth is helping other people express their truth um, and in a covert kind of way, you know. Yeah, but there, um, this you have the seven to it, is it eternity or infinity? I have that shirt as well, but I can't yeah. remember. That was great. Seven into eternity. Yeah, yeah, and that talks about the, you want to explain that one as well? Yeah, that's, um, I mean, in my, in my world, we call it the seven spirits of God. Um, and they're represented by the rainbow. Um, and you could even say they're represented in your body as, you know, the chakras. Um, and essentially, they're beings um, that it's like wisdom, might understanding, fear of the Lord, spirit of the Lord, counsel and knowledge. Uh, yeah. And um, I think that kind of like in the other spiritual terminology, they're your guides or your spirit team or whatever you want to call it. Um, it can look different for other people, but that's I call them the seven spirits of God. because That's just what I've always known them as. Um, but they essentially <clears throat> are with you even before you're born. Um, my voice is going out. They're with you even before you're born and they go with you through eternity, essentially. Like they're always with you. You're never alone because um, we have this mentality that we're alone in this world and we're not uh, at all. Um, there's so many things that exist around us that we can't see. And I just wanted to kind of create a representation of that because the shirt kind of looks like you're going through space. Um, so it's like dimensional type of thing. I don't know if I said that clearly. No, but how beautiful is that? If somebody, if you were, like, if I, I have that shirt, if I were to wear that shirt and someone were to stop me and to explain that to someone that you never know, like, yeah. you're right. So many times we do feel very alone. 
and to know that even if a human being isn't around you, spirit is, mm -hmm. and yeah. and that you're not an accident. You, you you're here yeah. on purpose, and you yeah. have purpose. And that's the biggest thing that your shirts and your collection shows. Your again, that's why I talked about your passion with God to to kick it off is mm -hmm. because you have that passion for people to understand how special they are. And you mm -hmm. see that through your shirts. Yeah. And even, <clears throat> even with finding the truth, it's just kind of like, I, like, I just feel like my mission in life is to find the truth, like so much more intensely than maybe other people. Like I can't go about my life just being like, Oh, I don't know if it's true or not. Like I have to figure it out. I have to. Um, it could be the Aries in me, but um, I just feel like there's just this fiery burning thing that's just like taking me through this dimension that we're in. That's like, we have to search out every possible avenue to find it, um, which is why I've even like over the last, it's really been the last like, couple of years that, like I was saying earlier, that everything, we're all talking about the same thing. Um you know, like in Hinduism, in Christianity, in, you know, the Muslim culture, like we're all talking about the same thing. Absolutely. Like we're all talking about God. We just have a different way to describe it. Um, and it's been so freeing for me to realize that because growing up in the religious world I've been in, you know, this is bad, this is good. And I was just like, that's just so limiting. Like, I hate that. <laughs> I hate that so much. Like, I'm bored with that. I'm so bored. Um, and yeah, it's, it's been, I just feel like the closer you get to source God, the more free you become. So that's how I know that I'm like on the right track. Um, and if I can help other people discover that freedom, I'm going to do it. <laughs> that's lovely. That's absolutely amazing. And we've spoken loads of times, haven't we Bryce about this, black and white thinking is just so limiting and as you were saying yeah. it's actually seen as a, a mental illness because there's nothing like that mm -hmm. like gorgeous pumpkin here oh. he's, a he's amazing and he's perfect but yeah. i don't think mice think that because he'll still go out and catch <laughs> mice you know so uh, yeah you, there's so many different ways at looking things through a different perspective and mm -hmm. it, we're not meant to be a black white i mean how boring would that be if right. that's the part we lived in yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I get, I get bored. I got bored with religion and <laughs> I mean, I was like in a charismatic, um, world and I remember going to a conference and being like, I know why people think we're crazy and God, if there, this is all there is, I'm done. I'm like, out. Oh, I, this is, this is not enough. <laughs> There's gotta be more. <laughs> um, and then I kind of, I've told Bryce before, but I've kind of from there went into like what I call like more kingdom mindset of the kingdom of God and the ever expanding kingdom of God and universe and whatnot, instead of this, oh, when we die, we'll go to heaven. Great. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you know, I get yeah. that. I think you're so right. Cause it does liberate. I know I, Stephanie has talked about this a lot before when you, when the chains of, of that mindset kind of, kind of shift in you and come off of you it's so liberating because you know, and I think a lot of religions, not just Christianity kind of put that guilt and shame into you. Um, right. But when that, when you realize that there's, that's, that's not who you are enough and you right. were created by, by source um, it is very liber li liberating. And I know like, I know Catherine and I, we've, we've talking, uh, spoken about like um, extraterrestrial life. And I think I'm like you, Catherine, before this mm -hmm. whole thing, I didn't really care if there were aliens or not. I was like, there probably are, but I'm more concerned about like this planet. Um, yeah. I'm more concerned about that ghost in my house. But, uh, <laughs> but, uh, but then I, I know when I started uh, covering this stuff on the dark outpost, we got so much backlash from very conservative mm -hmm. Christians because the, the idea of there being, like an all encompassing universe beyond our own understanding was like too much for them. And so it does show that limit, but when you break through that limit and you see the possibility of Palladians of all these different life forms, how great God is sources creator yeah. is and how you are just as much a part of that as yeah. they are. That's how important yeah. you are. You're not an yeah. accident. You're not just some, just some spoof of nature. Like you literally were put here on purpose, just like they were. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I just, I just applaud you because I think when I was, when I was your, cause you're a lot younger than me when I was your, when I was your age, I did not have that confidence <laughs> that you have when it comes to, um, 
understanding what, what you, I don't think I under really understood what I believed at, at, at that point. So that speaks to the maturity of your soul. Um, it also says that age is just a number guys, because unless it's a child, then, then it's not good. <laughs> but, um, there you go. you know, just, <laughs> how do I make it? Unless it's a child, it is not, oh, not okay. Yeah. So, 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 <laughs> water. yeah. But don't start any rumors. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. I just want to, we know how YouTube works. Like, we just want to clarify that. I'm talking about yeah. the philosophical understanding of knowing right. God, of knowing truth. Um, yeah you know, it doesn't, it doesn't matter what, you know, mm -hmm. it, you have a deeper understanding than most 40, 50, 60 year olds do. And you found right. that level of, of, of liberation, that empress, I think of the tarot cards, that empress mm -hmm. card, the, the most powerful, one of the most powerful cards in the deck. Um, mm -hmm. You understand, you have an, under, and, and I think part of understanding, I know Catherine and I've talked about this too. Part of having an understanding is knowing that there are things you don't understand. And yep. knowing that there are things you don't know and being okay with that. And when you're okay right. with that, you, you would then become powerful. You right. know, that's the most freeing thing is like, I might believe this today, but I might believe something totally different tomorrow. And I accept that. So the people that accept me will accept that. <laughs> yeah. I just think that is just so important. And what makes me, I mean, I'm just smiling throughout all of this because <laughs> I just think for you to be a young mom and to have this level of awareness and this sort of attitude, it just gives me such hope for the future, <laughs> not just for yours, because the enjoyment that you're going to get. I mean, just seeing you here and in all your other videos I've watched with you and Bryce, I love the fact that Levi's there with you. I love the fact that you're communicating with him and giving. I just think it's such an example. I don't want to be an old man saying, oh, you're such an example, but it's so <laughs> lovely to show people that there's a different way of doing things. Because I grew up where it was like, you couldn't possibly take your child to work. You couldn't possibly, mm -hmm. you know, children were to be seen and not heard, which never right. worked with me, which is why I was always in such <laughs> trouble. <laughs> but it's just wonderful seeing you creating this life for you and your family. Um, it, honestly, I really do applaud you. And so many people are going through this decision at the moment about whether to take their children out of school, um, what to do with their lives. And this is why we want to talk about people's creativity. And you are the perfect yeah. example of just saying, explore this. Yeah. yeah. I am. Um, what about that? <laughs> what by doing? saying, listen, come here. Um, yeah, I just, I feel like it's become. What? Okay, my have to change location. Um, <laughs> I just think it's a. Um, it's become such a place of power for me. Um, and in the beginning, it wasn't just trying to be a mom and navigating all that that encompasses. Um, and I think that's kind of what happened with going to England was it just switched something in me of like, wait, I can handle way more than I think I can. Um, and that's been such a huge place of power for me. Um, because honestly, traveling with a toddler is a little insane. Come on, honey, come here. Yes, so I know that feeling. <laughs> yeah. Especially internationally traveling. Um, I gotta come here, Baba. You know, we were talking. You told me that Levi had a, a meltdown at TSA, and I was like, "Well, I'm in my 30s, and I've had meltdowns at TSA too, so it's fine. It's totally fine." So. <laughs> oh, I know, and it, it's like. When you let go of that expectation, don't you find, Liz, of when you get let go of the expectation of what other people think about you, your child, how they're behaving and everything, then it just becomes so much more fun, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, it definitely does. Um, and just getting out of your comfort zone and doing something that's extra hard just makes everything so much easier. Um, and it's funny because I learned that <clears throat> when I was in film school. Um, I was terrible at comedy improv and I knew that I was, <laughs> but instead of just like, you know, not wanting to do it and just hiding away, I would volunteer first to do it. <laughs> I'd be like, okay, I'm doing this. I'm getting it over with. I'm, I'm going to be the first one to volunteer because I, I know that I'm not good at this. <laughs> and so I would <clears throat> push myself out of my comfort zone on a daily basis and I got to where I loved doing that and that launched me into a much power, more powerful place 
And I kind of forgot that. And then what's up? I was like, we need to, we need to like talk about this more because this has to do a lot with like people trying to find their passions too, about going into a place and being uncomfortable. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's, um, I mean, something also I've learned is pain is powerful. It's extremely powerful. I mean, childbirth, I mean, it creates a human, come on. <laughs> um, but I, I've learned that to not run from pain um, that pain is actually my friend. Um, and I'm sure in yoga, you understand that. <laughs> um, because it has every time I've gone through like a terrible, dark, um, moment, dark night of the soul, whatever you want to call it. Um, I have been, I feel like I essentially like shift timelines and like get on board with like who I really am supposed to be. Um, and so I've started to learn to not run from pain, as most people do, not run from being uncomfortable, because it's like a lot, it's literally like the tension of a <clears throat> slingshot, like the more tension there is, the more you're, pro- the more you're propelled into what you're supposed to be doing, or, you know, something that's going to completely change your life in a positive way. Um, and that was, that's, that's actually funny. the first the first sutra of the second pot is accepting pain as help for purification. Mm-hmm. And we talked yeah. about with that David and Medina that resistance creates friction, friction, friction creates change. And yeah. I tell my students all the time, get comfortable with being uncomfortable because you're right. When you mm-hmm. put yourself into those positions that um, challenge you, you find yeah. things out about yourself. And, and that's what we, I mean, cause people I've got, I know Catherine, you've probably gotten the same with the series we're doing where people are like, well, I don't know. I don't know what I like anymore. But if you put yourself into positions, don't be afraid to fail, you know, yeah. fail, 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 failure is actually sometimes just as, just as important as succeeding because without failure, you don't learn, you know, you don't, you don't shift and change. And I love that you said that you were, you were in film school and you consciously, intentionally put signed up for something that you knew was like your weak point you know and of course people don't want to be embarrassed they don't want to put themselves into a position where they look like they're they're struggling but to Mm -hmm. be conscious enough to put yourself in that position just to see what's going to happen like and then what you learn from that is like (laughs) i I really hope people like to me when you said that i was like ding 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 this is like one of the most (laughs) important things you've said is like well you've said a lot of important things but like (laughs) This is such an evolved soul to be able to at some <laughs> age to be like, I'm going to put myself into this position right. of controlled discomfort so that I can learn more about me and see right. what sparks fly up and what, what I'm actually capable of, you know? And what's the, and what I was 18 of, or 19 at the time. And what's amazing is I was just doing it out of a means of survival, like just trying to get through because I had to, I had to be in that class. Um, uh, it was just like you had to pick one or the other and that was the only one left <laughs> and um and I had to be at it so I was just like you know what I'm just gonna go for it I don't care if I like stupid like I obviously am gonna fail because it was bad I like I don't it's one of those things like being an older soul is <laughs> like I don't find certain humor funny yeah <laughs> and people my age do <laughs> I'm like that's not funny <laughs> I don't know why uh, so that's why it was so bad because I was like, I don't find that funny. And I don't want to just like use profanity to make something funnier. Like, it's just kind of like, it was just confusing to me. It was like, almost like I felt very autistic. In a sense. I was like, I don't get it. What is <laughs> happening? Um, but I would just make myself go first. Cause then I was like, I, at least I have nothing to compare it to. I don't have anybody to compare it to. If I just go, like everybody else is compared to me afterwards. So that's fine. Take it one for the <laughs> team. It, yeah, it ended up being like the best and the most freeing thing that like became a huge life lesson. <laughs> um, and even, even to the extent of like, you know, almost 10 years later when I was giving birth to my son, um, or I guess, yeah, eight years later, um, I told my midwife, she was like, you know, I was trying to do an unmedicated childbirth at home. Um, and she's like, okay, well, you know, like there are things you can do to like, uh, see what your pain um, management is, like what kind of, you know, like how well you can handle pain or whatnot. And I was like, 
okay, so I was just like, I'm not afraid of pain. Like, I'm not scared of being uncomfortable. And she was like, really? <laughs> yeah, no, like, I, I think I can handle it. Like, you know, childbirth is not even like a, like a scary thing for me. It's like afterwards of being a mother. Like, that's what's really scary. Like, the pain is fine. <laughs> the other stuff is what terrifies me. Um, but even she was just like, well, that's a great mindset to go into childbirth with, <laughs> it's just, you know, that it's the pain, you know, won't last and I'm not going to be scared of it. And it'll actually produce something really good. And it literally all stemmed from the time of me being uncomfortable in film school. Like, you know. Oh, it's fantastic. Do you think, Liz, that part of the reason we're in this mess that we're at or even though touch wood were coming out of it, is because a lot of people are not able to have those difficult conversations. And Absolutely. I mean, we're so conditioned to just be, um, to just be distracted. Um, mm. And we never, like no one ever sits quietly with themselves anymore um, and deal, like to deal with their inner demons their trauma their inner child and he's healing whatnot no one just sits and and lets those thoughts come up I mean there's like screens in cars nowadays like for children to like watch something while they're driving there's you know airplanes we have screens <laughs> there's you know radio there's always something that you can be putting into you to distract you um and that's very much the world that we live in. I mean, I remember telling my friends, <clears throat> can I go back in the room now? <laughs> He's like, why are you looking at me like that? Um, I remember telling my friends that I like never listened to something. I like always just drove in silence. And they were like, what, what is wrong with you? <laughs> I was like, I like what I'm, I like my thoughts. <laughs> I like listening to myself think. And that's when like, so much gets revealed to me. Um, okay, maybe we need to go back. <laughs> um, and uh, and they were just like really confused. Like honestly, growing up, I was just the weird one. I was just like the weird like <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how to describe it, but I was just always just like doing things that like old people would do. <laughs> like they would tell me. Um, but it was like, I just never, I realized that I just didn't want to be distracted. Like there was so much more benefit in just letting myself be so that whatever was talking to me, I could actually absorb and understand and think about and process. And I went through a, a really um, long time of being essentially like a hermit, like just kept to myself in the quiet all the time like when I wasn't working or whatnot I like studied quantum physics I like just I just dove into like everything that I could um and it very much just launching me launched me into what I'm doing today and like talking about today um because I had all that time to myself it was right before I uh it was like two years before I had Levi <clears throat> but I feel like that is exactly it for sure is one reason why our world is the way it is because everybody's so disconnected from themselves yeah. um and that's the goal i think of the dark side <laughs> is to get us distracted and disconnected from our divinity essentially so how do you how are you feeling about where we're at globally now you know i know it's a big question but are you you still yeah. sure? by saying how good you were feeling I feel the same oh, how yeah. are you feeling Liz about where we're at now as humanity I'm uh, I mean honestly uh speaking not from this past week of mercury retrograde and full moon <laughs> um I'm feeling great otherwise <laughs> this week has been rough but um it's been very healing um but I I feel I just the start of this like new year what we call the new year. Um, I have just had this like excitement bubbling up in me. Like I haven't had in ever, I don't think. Um, just really being excited for the future and just ready to actually like start the new world. Um, and like, I'm getting like the projects that I wanna do like ready in my head and, and um, setting myself up to like be ready to work essentially. 
Um, so I think so many people are just like, oh yeah, everything's going to change. It's going to be kumbaya. And I'm like, no, we got to get to work. <laughs> what are you talking about? But it's going to be um, a different kind of work because we're going to be following our passion, our dharma. Like you started off saying that you want to uh, bring like, you with your in-laws you because they they are tailors and you want to give them not only a chance to like provide but to be creative in their and mm -hmm. what they can do their talents because they're talented yeah. as well and so like that passion is coming forth from you through and we have this really screwed up i think the western world in general just has this really screwed up view on work like we think mm -hmm. that work should be something that is like stressful and not fun but necessary yeah. that we got to fight for but that's not what dharma is you know if you if you do what you love you'll never work a day in your life when you when you're working on something you're passionate about you can create and like the time flies and, mm -hmm. and it's not even you're not even counting the hours to see how much money you're making you're actually enthralled in the creation and that and right. the, the opposite of war isn't peace it is creation and so yeah. it's like that different uh perspective on, on uh, what we're going to be doing because we it's I, I, I don't believe in my personal opinion and I'm not a money expert but I believe when we come into this new this new earth the new financial system is going to make it so we're not lacking anything that we're all going to be provided for by the universe that as we're supposed to be um, and a non com I don't people say it's communism not not, a, not like that in, in a very non-communistic way we're all going to have our freedoms and our rights um and so therefore if, if everything you have is provided for what are you going to do it's like i think i told you in one show Catherine, or maybe i can't remember but my good my best friend growing up i remember being at her house and her dad said to her if you didn't have anything to fear if you didn't if you didn't have to fear failure or whatever what would you do if nothing bad was going to happen. And, and it's like asking people, like, if you didn't have that fear of survival, if you didn't have that fear of providing for your family, what would you do? What would you create? It's even, um, I kind of took that mindset of, I mean, I'm in a place where my husband has a full-time job, so I can, I'm very blessed to be able to do it um, in this world that we're in currently. Um, I'm hoping it changes for everyone at some point, but um I'm very blessed to be able to, when I started thinking about what I wanted to do from home outside of going to that dance studio, I was like, what actually brings me life uh, that won't feel like work <laughs> that can produce money? And I was like, clothing, that's what it is. And I love, like, fashion is, I mean, I don't like the world of fashion, <laughs> um, but I love... But I love expressing myself through um, fashion. I, 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 it's just one of those things. Like my sister makes fun of me all the time because I'm like, oh, this looks cute together and this looks cute together. What if I wear this? And she's like, why are you so excited about this? Like, I don't know. I just, it's like, it's just a part of me. I love creatively, like, like being able to put that, put something on that I've created. Um, mm. I literally wear all of my own stuff. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, ooh, I just made this one. I'm going to buy it. And my husband's like, maybe you should wait a minute. Like, maybe you should wait till other people start buying it more and then you have the money to buy it first. I'm like, but it's so cool. I'm so excited to wear it. <laughs> I love it. It's just sweet. a part of me, though. When you, you wear stuff that resonates with you, I mean, we, talk, we all talk about words or energy and intent mm -hmm. and you know my favorite water bottle is one that's got lovely symbols engraved into it and things and it mm -hmm. is and if you're wearing stuff not only that you've created but are they giving the message out to the world that you want that is going to have an f an effect not only on your energetic field but on everyone else that you interact with yeah and i i get and it's i can tell because i get compliments all the time on when i actually wear my own stuff people are like oh i love that and and then when I wear something that I bought from a store, people are, you know, no one says anything kind of thing. And I'm like, oh, thanks, it's mine. <laughs> I did that. Yeah. I made that. <laughs> yeah, it's, I can definitely tell energetically the difference. Um, and it's powerful. It's, it's one of the things of just like, I, at this point, I don't understand how people don't understand energy. <laughs> I just don't. Yeah. I don't know how it's not a part of their life or their thought process. You know. Well, the whole expressing yourself with clothing too. I get what you're saying, loving fashion, but not the fashion industry. And I had a cousin, um, 
he was, he was about, he's about 10 years younger than me, but I remember when he was first, we were little. And I remember when he was first, in the South, you know, Liz, in the South, people dress their kids up, you know, big collars, like I had ruffled socks, like your hair is done perfectly. But my aunt allowed my cousin when he first started dressing himself for like that year, just to let him dress himself because it was like the one point in his life where he was going to be able to wear whatever he want, wanted and no one was yeah. going to second about it. Oh, he would wear goggles to daycare. Yeah. He, he would wear, you know, his clothes inside out mismatched. And she was just like, I'm just gonna let him express himself before he can't right. do this anymore. You know, yeah, but it, yeah. it is an expression. It is, it is a way that you, you know, everybody's body is unique to themselves. And just like, I like to cut my t-shirts. Everyone has their own way of, of wearing things. And you can yeah. tell when someone's uncomfortable in their clothes, like you, oh, you, can tell, yeah. you know, yeah. It's, it's seriously a powerful thing. Like that's what I've, I've tried to tell my family this because I've like, always been like the one they go to they're like does this look good does this look good I'm like well do you feel good in it like that's 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 the real question um and even just how people dress and carry themselves says so much about how they think about themselves and that's why I like to express myself through it because I'm like this is how I think about myself and you know I want that to come across that way um it's changed a little since I've been a mother because you kind of just have to put on something like this is so dingy now from all the stains and whatnot. <laughs> you know, it's fine. It'll, it, this too shall pass. <laughs> um, but yeah, I always, uh, I try to, <clears throat> at one point my mom was wearing uh, like a lot of like really loud stuff, like ch pink cheetah print and whatnot. And it was just, it didn't fit her personality. And I told her, I was like, you're screaming at people, mom. Like, you're screaming at them to look at you. And she's like, huh. And then since then, she like never really like felt like she had to wear something like that to get attention. That type of deal. Like, like she actually like took it. She was like, you're right. I think I am. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's super powerful. I I mean, everything really is anything that you consciously decide to put in your body, on your body, the way you do your hair, the way you present yourself in general says something. It just does. Um, and you control what it says. Well, if you could do something with a tail for me, I'd be really, really happy. <laughs> oh, you have to, Liz. You have to. Cat ears. Yeah. yeah cause I've always thought losing our fur and tails was a big mistake. Um, I still... <laughs> I know I was meant to have one. So, yeah, let me know when that's available and I'll buy it in every color going. <laughs> well, I can see now a beautiful, like, sort the tail sweatshirt with a tail at the yeah. bottom. That'd be cool. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah. before we uh, close out, I want to once again show everybody Liz's shop. We'll have the links down in the uh, description box below. This is Oliviera by Elizabeth. And you actually do have a new fe uh, feature where people can custom design their own shirt, right? Yeah. So um, I it started out with my grandma wanting me to make a few um, different shirts for her church group. And so I was like, okay, let's put a custom thing on it. But then I was like, you know what? If someone has an idea of something that they want on the shirt and I can like work with them to make it, I'll do that. Like, you know, like just kind of be open to that because I love designing things. So, and that gives um, people an outlet for their own uh, creativity yeah. too. And again, yeah. guys, so Liz's channel is the Liz Olive Show on YouTube. She just opened it again. We will put those links down in the description box below. Here is her TikTok channel for those who are um tiktokers is that what you call it liz yeah <laughs> I, I, don't I, know. I can't even work out instagram let alone tiktok <laughs> i know right i'm still trying to figure out twitter so um so that's uh, olive uh, olive liz 333 again this is your fourth round at yeah. um at at tiktok um so some of you i know already follow her here but do go ahead and do her youtube as well and um, are there any more platforms, Liz? You are on Instagram. I know I follow you on both your uh, private and your your personal, not your private, but your personal and your um, and your uh, business page here. So that's a good good place for people to contact you as well, right? If they want to ask you about, yeah, I do also have a Telegram. Um, if you want to follow me on there too, um, your Telegram it's, channel. Linked in on my YouTube um, video. Okay, cool. So it's in her, her YouTube videos. So guys, so there you go. So um, 
that was so fun. Honestly, like every episode oh, we do right. with these, I'm like, I feel inspired. So. <laughs> Oh, good. I'm like, I feel like that is part of just my mission in life is just to inspire people. So I'm glad it's, it's happening that way. Thank you so much. It's been such a pleasure finding out more about you. Bye bye, Levi. Bye. Bye. <laughs> oh, how adorable. I've got some <laughs> rocks as well with me. Oh, some fun rocks. Like that one's really nice. And even better. <laughs> I've now got a pussy cat in there. Can you see the pussy oh. cat? Pumpkin. Where's the pussy cat thing? He's so magnificent. Uh, meow. Meow. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Thank you so much. That's just been such a pleasure to get to know you better. And I say yeah. all the links will be under the video. No. Awesome. Thank yes. you guys so much. Yes, Bye. of course. Bye, guys. Bye. 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 Let me show